Hi everybody, welcome back. This is part two of the basic fluid flow simulation using ANSYS Discovery. Um, as you saw in part one, we used the explore mode in ANSYS Discovery to get really fast GPU powered uh, results to get an understanding of what the flow looks like. Now what we wanna do is we want to uh, get a high accuracy solution using our flagship ANSYS fluid flow solvers, which are CPU based, and be able to do things like apply local mesh refinement to get a accurate answer for things like pressure drop and so on. So let me show you how to do that. To go to analyze mode, simply click here. Um, you'll notice that all the inputs that you provided in the previous uh, video or tutorial, such as the material properties, uh, fluid flow inlets, outlets, and so on are all preserved. But if you look up at the ribbon, you have access to a few more options, like these advanced simulation options, mesh controls, and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a mesh refinement. And we're going to do that by clicking local fidelity and then triple clicking on this body here, the fluid domain. Okay. You can also select the fluid domain from the tree right here. But triple clicking is an easy way to select a body. So let's apply a, um, a local fidelity control of, let's say, five millimeters. So you can just say five and mm and hit enter. Okay, and then hit escape to um, exit the uh, uh, head up display. You'll notice on the tree, we have a fidelity setting that shows up in addition to all the settings that you applied previously. Okay, now if you're wondering what kind of uh, uh, input you need to apply. And of course, that is based on experience, maybe uh, um, some guidance from ANSYS. But uh, what you can do is if you just select this radius here, you'll see that this is a 25 millimeter radius. So that means you have a 50 millimeter diameter. So by applying a mesh size of five millimeters, you ensure that you have a minimum of 10 mesh elements, uh, which, which is good enough for this particular simulation. Uh, by the way, just you'll notice that the contours are turned on, so you can turn it off um, like so. Um, I also want to remind you that the transparency is turned on, so you can always turn that back off or make it opaque by clicking here like so. You also have access to the um, to the cross section view by clicking X, uh, or I'm sorry, Y on the global coordinate system, and then hitting the X key to go into cross section like so, and hit D to come back into 3D mode. So uh, there's one more thing I'd like to do. I'd like to apply a, um, a uh, monitor because I want to calculate pressure drop and monitor the convergence of the pressure drop calculation. So my outlet is a zero pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and then create a monitor. So the variable I'm interested in is pressure. And I'm happy with average, so I'll click a check mark. Okay, so this little box shows up, and what I want to do is click on the details um, button to show this chart that I'm going to monitor the result as it computes. Okay, so let's hit escape two times to exit from here. Now, of course, I can you know create as many monitors as I want, but I'm really interested in let's say pressure between inlet one and the outlet. Okay. So uh, I can dismiss this chart. I just want to retain the details chart like this. And um, that's basically it. Um, I have a couple of other options I can turn on if I want. So under simulation options, you'll notice there are many additional fluid flow options. So for example, things like um, you know advanced options like numerical convergence and so on. Uh, for this particular uh, example, let's switch from numerical convergence to monitored value convergence. This is a nice advanced feature where the solver automatically stops when the monitored value has reached its uh, final value. So uh, just as an example of the advanced settings that you have in analyze mode. So now we're done, all we have to do is click the green solve button. Now I wanna remind you that in analyze mode, we're using our high fidelity CPU based solvers. Those, this is uh, going to solve a little bit slower compared to the GPU solvers in explore mode, but the results you're getting are higher quality, higher accuracy, and higher fidelity. 
So uh, this is a good time to take a break, um, you know, grab a coffee or grab a tea or whatever you like to drink. And then uh, this particular problem should solve, you know, in about five to 15 minutes, depending on your computer. Now, one thing you'll notice is a green progress bar, which is kind of going around the simulation information display on the bottom. Uh, once it's halfway around, you can display the mesh and you do that by clicking here. Okay. So this is using a traditional mesh based approach. So, you know, people typically want to inspect the mesh and see what things look like on the inside. So let's go back into cross section mode by clicking on the Y uh, axis in the global coordinate system and hitting X for cross section. And let's turn on a cut plane by clicking here. And you'll notice that uh, we have a pretty nice mesh. And uh, you know we have a lot of intelligence built into ANSYS Discovery to automatically refine the mesh uh, in areas of interest, like the walls or areas of curvature, as you can see over here. So you don't have to do too much uh, uh, thinking or, or playing around with these kind of controls. right? So we leverage decades of simulation experience to be able to automate these kind of things for you. So like I said before, you know, um, this solution is probably going to take about uh, 5 to 15 minutes, depending on, on your computer. Uh, once the solve actually starts, you'll see this chart updating with a, with a purple line. And, you know, we'll, we'll use that to monitor the progress of the simulation. So as you can see, this has started. And, um, you know, once this value for pressure reaches a steady state or constant value, the simulation will automatically stop and you'll be able to view your results and take a look at preci precise pressure drop values and things like that. So once again, this might take a few minutes. So we'll, we'll see you in a couple of minutes after you've grabbed your coffee. As you can see, the solution is progressing pretty nicely. Um, I am running on four cores on my laptop, uh, which is the default. Uh, please note that if you have access to more cores on your laptop or your desktop, you can certainly use those if you have the license. Uh, to do so. Um, and uh, this is not using the GPU at all. So for example, if you don't have a GPU and you're not able to use the explore mode, you can as easily come into analyze mode and get the same kind of results. In fact, even more results. Um, and the, the compromises is not as fast as the GPU mode. So um, it's just a, a good trade off, I think, uh, pretty reasonable. So, um, you know, let's keep watching this result and the software should automatically shut itself off or, or the solve should stop automatically once that uh, pressure value flatlines. So let's just give it a few more minutes. Okay, um, you can see that's pretty much uh, reached a steady state value um, and you can see the green kind of line around the SID has gone all the way around, which indicates that it's pretty much done. So uh, we just have a, a minute or so more to, um, uh, to post-process the results, and then we can take a look at uh, exact values of pressure drop. Actually, at the moment, you can already look at this. If you hover your cursor over this line, it tells you what the pressure drop is. So in this particular case, it's about uh, 2146 pascals. And uh, while I was talking, you can see the results updated. So this is your high fidelity solution for this particular case using a detailed mesh that you see displayed down below. So let's turn off the cross section here and you can see what that looks like. You know, this is the final steady state solution. You can see the, um, you know, the two streams of different temperature fluids mixing as they get past that vein. And, uh, you know, just interesting to see, um, you know, how the fluid flow behaves. So this may or may not be an ideal flow distribution at the outlet, or maybe the pressure drop is uh, too high. You can easily make uh, changes to the design, rerun it really quick in explore mode, and then validate your or verify your design in analyze mode. Um, I just want to point out that uh, if you want to hand this project off to a colleague who is using our expert uh, ANSYS Fluent uh, software, you can easily do that by clicking here and then clicking here to uh, export a Fluent file. And your colleague can 
import this into his or her uh, Fluent uh, software and verify or take your work to the next level. So um, that's it for part two of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, please make sure to watch the other videos in the Discovery Getting Started series. Thank you very much and have a great day.